It's October the 19th, Tuesday, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Extra Point Podcast. My name is Todd Stiles. I'm one of the pastors here at First Family, and so glad you've joined us for another episode in which we take a look back at the text and or topic from the previous week's teaching at First Family and bring some additional insight, some further observation. This week, I'd like to actually take uh, a deeper dive applicationally and uh, share with you um, tips for increasing your spiritual clarity and then some tips for increasing spiritual control. Now, if you weren't there Sunday and you weren't able to either hear online or in person uh, to catch our teaching from Ephesians 5, 15 through 21, then you will not recognize those are common words we used. We used the idea of spiritual clarity to help us understand uh, Paul's admonition to understand what the will of the Lord is. And then the idea of increasing in our spiritual control would be a way to express the thought behind Paul's admonition to be filled with the Spirit. And at the end of the day, we made this assertion and contended for this fact that um, spiritual clarity or the Lord's will, and then of course spiritual control or the Holy Spirit, they are essential for living a different kind of life in the wisest way possible. What I want to do today is to bring uh, some tips on increasing both of those. How can we increase spiritual clarity, or how can we um, grow in our understanding of the Lord's will? And then how can we uh, deepen our awareness of the Holy Spirit? How can we grow in being filled with the Spirit? Now, I will make a uh, an assumption here, and you'll need to hear this and go back to hear the me- hear the message to make sure that this is a uh, uh, true, so to speak, and that is that. I- my understanding of God's will, or the Lord's will, as used in Ephesians 5, uh, does relate to God's Word, God's work, and our work. So those three threads uh, were things I brought to the table regarding God's word, uh, excuse me, God's will. And I um, contended, so to speak, or asserted, or at least uh, maintained that, This is something that's known, and we gain further insight into it, and then that affects our actions and decisions. So how can we increase our spiritual clarity? How can we increase our understanding of the Lord's will? Well, here are four things that I think will help every believer in that endeavor. First of all, dive into the Bible's meta-narrative. In other words, just understand the real big picture of Scripture. What is God doing throughout 66 books? Um, What are the inspired writers communicating? Why is some information in there, and why is other information not in there? There is a point to the revelation that God gives of Himself and of His redemptive activity. So I would encourage you to read the Bible through, and I would encourage you to do this in somewhat of a quick fashion. And when I say that, what I mean is I wouldn't try to necessarily study every chapter and parse the words and try to figure out outlines when you're reading for this purpose. I would read it through like a novel uh, or just read it quickly in the sense of, you know, multiple chapters at a time, uh, at times whole books, and just gain the big picture and see the flow of the story. Another good way to understand the meta narrative of Scripture is to take the course perspectives uh, because I think perspectives um, kind of lays out what God not only has been up to in the history of missions, but why that is the history of missions, because it's the story of God played out over multiple generations and over centuries. So my first tip for increasing spiritual clarity, which is increasing your understanding of the Lord's will, would be to dive into the Bible's meta narrative. The second tip I'd make is this commit to God's end game, which I think is spelled out in a beautiful way in Revelation 7 9, where we see gathered around the throne are people from every nation, language, and tribe. And so this is God's end game, and it shows the ultimate um, result of all of God's redemptive activity. It would show the the final conclusion to the meta-narrative or the story. 
So commit to God's end game. This is what God is up to. This is what God is after. And he gets what he wills, so to speak. And so let's commit to that because that will clarify in our mind God's will. I'd also encourage two other points. Tip number three, read deep books on soteriology. Now, I make that tip because I do believe God's will is um, uh, inner, um, it's inextricably connected to God's Word and God's work as seen in Christ. Again, I explained some of this on Sunday, but because God's Word predicted, prophesied, anticipated, and foretold of the work of Christ in His coming, in His death, burial, and resurrection, which was centered around the saving of God's people. So this is really the, the apex of history. It's everything the Old Testament pointed to. It's what the New Testament looks back to. And, and so as we understand more about how and why God saves people, it will give us clarity, and I would say increasing clarity, uh, about God's will. And I'd remind you that Peter actually said it's not God's will that any should perish. So Peter connected the saving of people to God's will, and so it's important for us to realize if we want an increasing amount of clarity regarding the Lord's will, I think it would help to read deep books on soteriology. I have some uh, titles to recommend to you, so jot these down. Uh, first of all, a classic is The Cross of Christ by John Stott. I'd encourage you to read that. It's probably one more known to some people, the author for sure will be, but John Stott's The Cross of Christ is a classic. Um, one uh, or two you may not have heard that I really enjoy, uh, one by Derek Thomas called How the Gospel Brings Us All the Way Home, a relatively short book, but I really enjoy it, uh, and I think you would too, How the Gospel Brings Us All the Way Home by Derek Thomas. Another book by my favorite author, Sam Storms, uh, Chosen for Life. And I'd encourage you to read this a little longer than the previous one, but uh, Sam is a tremendous articulator of spiritual truth uh, and, a, and a, just a top-notch expositor of, of the Bible. And I'd encourage you to read Chosen for Life by Sam Storms. And then, uh, how could I not mention this one here, and that is Wayne Grudem's Systematic Theology just the section on salvation. Now, I think the whole book's tremendous, but it's well over, what, 1,200 pages at least. Uh, but if you'll just pick up this book and read the section on soteriology or the doctrine of salvation, you'll find much insight there. And as you read deep books on soteriology, which, by the way, means the doctrine of salvation or the study of salvation, uh, you'll become more and more enamored and amazed um, uh, and astounded at the way God saves people, which is really tied to his to the meta narrative of Scripture, and uh, his end game as well. And then, lastly, I would um, provide this tip for you: initiate relationships with unsaved people. Because here's why: as you learn more about God's end game, the unfolding narrative of Scripture, and how God saves people, as you begin to dive into this and see it, if you don't have a laboratory in which to process this, it becomes mere head knowledge. But when you have relationships with those who need the saving work of God, and you begin to watch how this unfolds in their life and how God will use you as a means to relay the wonderful news of His salvation, it, it's a beautiful place to see um, doctrine really gather some shoe leather and get some traction and so if you want to increase spiritual clarity, if you want to deepen your understanding of God's will, or as Paul said, the Lord's will, those are four tips to help you. Dive into the Bible's meta narrative, commit to God's end game, read deep books on soteriology, and initiate relationships with unsaved people. Now regarding tips for increasing spiritual control, just three of them, I'll mention these. Uh, first of all, address other appetite issues. You see, Paul did encourage us to be being filled with the Holy Spirit, but often we um, aren't experiencing that or don't pursue that because we have other things we are being filled with. And so I think as you realize that there is a greater sense of control the Spirit wants to have on you and within you, it will highlight 
the things that actually are controlling you that shouldn't. Now, in Ephesians 5, the one he mentions is alcohol, and he says we should not be getting drunk. But there could be other things that are that are filling us, so to speak, things that are controlling us besides the Holy Spirit. And I think addressing those is a great first step in realizing I need the Holy Spirit's control, not a certain food or a certain drink or a habit or an activity. Second of all, I would say fast. It's one of the best ways to visibly portray your dependence upon God and the Holy Spirit is to fast and to depend upon Him. To, um, to visibly show that you value the Holy Spirit's work in your life, the Holy Spirit's filling of your life more than you do even food or drink. And so fasting is a tremendously helpful discipline. It's a biblical discipline. And I'd encourage you to begin to fast on a regular basis as a way to increase Uh, the Holy Spirit's control of your life. And it probably happens because in fasting, you become more aware of your need for it. And then as you pray and submit to it, uh, God so graciously then empowers us through His Spirit, and we sense and see and actually experience a greater control by the Holy Spirit. And then lastly, I would say act on spiritual leadings. And I could use the word impulses here, but let me just simply stick with this. Act on spiritual leadings, and know this, that you won't act on them perfectly all the time, but what you're doing is you're getting into the practice of of acting, not just analyzing. Now, there is a point in which we discern and we um, we look at things in process, but, but most of the time, and I would say this to uh, all of us, most of the time we... Um, go beyond just analysis, and we actually get into analysis paralysis. We actually analyze beyond the point of knowledge, and we we almost look at things to the point that we talk ourselves out of them. And I'm just by experience and by, um, can we say, knowledge, am convinced that if we, learned to, if we learn to act on spiritual leadings, the minute we know it's God— uh, then as we practice that, even through the times that we don't do it perfectly, even through the times we hit a foul ball, if we're learning to act on spiritual leadings, we will get better at that. We'll hear the, Lord, the Lord's voice more clearly. Now, it's not that He talks unclearly. We just hear unclearly. But we'll have uh, better trained ears. We'll be able to analyze in a quicker way and act in a quicker way. All of this is so that we begin to live in a continuous fashion of acting on the Spirit's leadings. And as we do, then we begin to realize the Spirit is living in us. He's leading us, and to keep in step with Him means to hear Him, to to know what He would say, and then to obey Him promptly. And then the fourth tip I would say is repeat this. Yes, just repeat those three steps on a regular basis. Address other appetite issues that are taking control. Fast from them periodically. And then just act on the spiritual leadings that you have from the Holy Spirit. Repeat this over and over, and what you'll find is you'll begin to live in a continuing uh, fashion of being filled with the Spirit. And as that increases, and as your clarity about what God is doing increases, you'll then be able to live in such a way that's wise that's accurate, that's on target, it's a bullseye kind of life, and that is exactly the kind of life Paul is urging us to live in light of the evil days that we're in. So my brother or sister, will you just hear these tips? Um, Will you embrace the ones that, that really kind of blanket you right now? And let us pray to this end that God would continue to give us understanding into the Lord's will, and continue to fill us with His Holy Spirit so that we can walk carefully in the wisest way possible and live this different kind of